Good morning and welcome back to our Social Media Corner. My name is Diana and I'm the Social Media Manager at the IAA. We are live from Vienna, our headquarters, and there's so much going on here this week. Our general conference started on Monday and our scientific forum started yesterday and it comes to an end today. And this year our scientific forum is all about the much needed transition to clean energy. Did you know, for example, that if the world is to achieve the climate goals, by 2050, 90% of electricity will need to come from low carbon sources? That's true. The good news is that nuclear can help us get there. Now, I'm very pleased to introduce you to our next guest, Kirsty Gogan. Kirsty is the co-founder of Energy for Humanity, an NGO with a focus in achieving the goal of clean and cheap energy for all. Good morning, Kirsty. Welcome. Thanks, Diana. Nice to be here. It's good to have you here. Thank you. So, Kirsty, regularly you call nuclear a taboo. Why is it so? Oh, well, I guess what is a taboo? You know, a taboo is something that um, we think is really bad. And because we think it's really bad, we are afraid of it. And what happens then is that we pile on other bad associations connected to that taboo. Um, and then it has a lot of power because by its very nature it's something that we believe but that is unexamined. And because it's unexamined, it can organize our thoughts in ways that we don't even realize. Mm -hmm. So it's... Very good. And uh, Kirsty, what exactly is the role that nuclear pl plays when it comes to the transition to the much needed clean energy? The clean energy transition, yeah. Well, I was talking with my colleague Eric about, about this question this morning and, uh, and he reminded me of the story when Mahatma Gandhi came to, uh, to the UK, to Manchester, and he was asked the question, what do you think about Western civilization? And he said, I think it would be a good idea. <laughs> And I think that's, that's actually, you know, it's like what clean energy transition? You know, after 25 years of successfully building public and political support for action on climate change, we haven't made a dent in the upward trajectory of emissions. The share of fossil fuels in our energy system is the same today as it was 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. So actually, you know, we really need to think differently about the clean energy transition and start implementing it. Mm -hmm. So more stop talking and start doing more? Yeah, and actually mm -hmm. looking at the, uh, across the whole energy system, which rather than at sort of the, the individual technologies, you know, we've invested a huge amount of, um, of effort and resources in certain energy technologies and really neglected others. And I think nuclear technology is a good example of that, where we really, st we really should start thinking about how to enable nuclear technology to play the meaningful, con to make the meaningful contribution mm -hmm. towards that clean energy transition that it has a great potential for, and not just in the power sector, but across all of the, um, the, the harder to decarbonize sectors like oil and gas for transport, heating and industry. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What are, you would say, some myths about uh, nuclear? Some, some misconceptions. Oh, yes. Well, myths, I mean, they're a bit like taboos, aren't they? They're, they're sort of unexamined beliefs that are held yeah. and have a great deal of power over how we organize our thoughts. So um, I, think, I think any myths that we might be holding on to um, are actually extremely dangerous in this current situation that we're in, where we're facing a climate emergency and now has, you know, it's never been more important for humans to step outside of our tendencies to, you know, towards tribal um, identity and, um, and really focus on evidence-based decision-making. And that includes challenging some of our preconceptions or our misconceptions or indeed our myths and our taboos that we might be holding on to, to really examine whether or not there's it's, we can substantiate those ideas, or indeed whether or not actually there is, um, there is a very different reality um, associated with those technologies. And uh, what do you think are some of the main challenges faced by nuclear? Can you name some, some of the main ones? You know, I think one of the like, biggest challenge of all for nuclear technology is the way that we frame how we talk about nuclear technology in terms of challenges instead of 
in terms of how we can enable this technology. And I think that it, actually if we were to spin that around and talk about what would what needs to be done to enable this technology to make a, the meaningful contribution that it has the potential for, we would be having a very different mindset and we would be much more into implementation rather than the kind of more negative um, and sort of almost defeatist perspective that we tend to have when we're always talking about nuclear technology in terms of challenges and risks. Mm -hmm. and, um, I think it's safe to say that uh, another big challenge of nuclear, ne n n nuclear energy is the public perception, the public opinion. Mm -hmm. um, how do you think we can change that, the, the public perception that uh, the general public has towards nuclear? Well, you know, it's really interesting, this question about public perception and public opinion, because really it depends on what you ask, who you ask, when you ask them, and how you ask them. Um, for example, if you ask people in, uh, in Europe or in the United States if they support nuclear technology, you'll generally get around you know, 40-45% of people being supportive. But if you ask people, do you support nuclear energy and renewables as part of a clean energy system, then the support increases to like 80%, 85% support, which is you know, a really interesting example of how actually it depends on how you ask, who you ask, when you ask and what you ask. Um, I think there is a lot of support actually for, um, for all clean technologies um, and really the, 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 the second thing I would say is that it's important that the industry leads with the value proposition, leads with the benefits to society and to the environment um, and th that show people like what contribution it can make towards improving their lives, inc improving our air quality, and helping to solve our big challenges like climate change. Mm -hmm. Very nice, thank you. We've discussed several issues. Now, if I am a person, let's say, with very little time, what, can you tell me one thing that everyone should know about nuclear? Uh, $2,400 a kilowatt, because that is the, that's the price for the new nuclear build that's just been announced in China for four new units. It's going to be um, $2,400 a kilowatt. So if anybody tells you that nuclear is expensive and slow, you can tell them that that is not actually true. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kirsty, for joining us here. It's been such a pleasure. It was a very short conversation, but very insightful. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Now, later today, we will still have the chance to interview Stefano Monti, one of our top experts when it comes to nuclear power innovation. Make sure you don't miss it. See you later. <laughs>